good stuff. But uh, yeah, so let's dive into the analog pocket. Yes. All right, so the analog pocket, the long awaited analog pocket is released. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do a pre brief overview before we dive into the article, Stephen, of what the analog pocket is? I find it exciting. <laughs> I just <laughs> it say is that. pretty cool. On on multiple on for multiple reasons, um, the multiple multiple pocket. The analog pocket is cool. The analog pocket allows you to bring back the original Game Boy games, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, the original cartridges, put them into the device, and it actually will play them like an original Game Boy. Um, even trying to emulate, even trying to um, different screen modes that will simulate the original Game Boy, different um, Game Boy screens, like the original yeah. green, like that green kind of one, right? And then the Game, yeah. Game Boy Light with the, like, on for multiple reasons, this is hitting the right buttons and the right things. Yeah. And um, it's like retro gaming with modern tech coming together in just the right balance. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, so that's... Can you bring it's up pretty a, ex, it's exciting for sure. Can you bring up I'll, a picture um, of it here? Just, just, I will just, bring up the article right away here. So this is that. the analog pocket. People have been waiting quite a while for this. So it can play out of the box. It can play Game Boy games, original mm -hmm. Game Boy games, Game Boy Color games, and Game Boy Advance games. Yeah. And it was revealed to the world back in October of 2019. So just over two years ago. And they're finally shipping and you can get your name on or pre-order more of them today. So I think if you've already pre-ordered one, they're shipping them from my understanding and you can pre-order more, which will be shipping soon. Mm -hmm. It comes in a couple of different colors, very, <laughs> uh, very similar in look to the original Game Boy, um, the shape of it. Yeah, they, they seem to have tried to get similar to to size um which is probably on purpose yeah a little bit and uh it's like a good fit and 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 i think in this article they might have mentioned that or another one that it was like a little bit bigger than other modern like mobile gaming devices like this but the size actually is nice it's nice to have yeah it, not no for small. sure and here's actually a picture of it on top of an old original game boy i should have yeah. pulled mine out i know i have one or two of those kicking around the original game boys here um yeah, i believe you do but yeah, good old Tetris. We need to bring that out once in a while. See, so. that's what's cool about this analog pocket is you can go get your original Tetris Tetris. I can't speak this morning. Tetris cartridge. Yeah. And you can throw it into this thing and it'll work. Yes. And what's really cool is that this is not emulation. So yeah. a lot it's of the actually playing the cartridge. We should be clear about that. Yeah. So a lot of modern stuff is using like even even the Nintendo, what was the Nintendo NES Super Nintendo um, collection that they did? Uh, the PS1 did a, a PS1 classic. Or that those like retro things they bring back with the game collections. Okay, those, yeah. those use emulation. So this yeah. is not using emulation. Yeah. This is using a totally different kind of technology that um, is actually playing the cartridge. Actually playing the yeah. cartridge and actually very close to like the original hardware to how it's designed, which I want to go into more later. But sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's really cool. Like there's, so here as for the screen, um, it was saying it's a three and a half inch LCD screen with, um, 1600 by 1440 pixels. Whereas the old Game Boy screen just had 2340 pixels. <laughs> yeah. So, um, this has 2.304 million pixels. So yeah. Um, a big screen. I, difference. that's exciting. First, Ben said he sadly missed the first round of pre-orders. Oh, but he, you, but he did, but finally able to get one today. Very cool. Ben G. <laughs> I sadly missed the first round of pre-orders due to my bank blocking the transaction, but I finally was able to secure one today. Awesome. That's awesome. We'd love to hear actually, Ben, when you get that, maybe leave it, come back here and leave a comment in the comment section. So we'll, people can see how long it took for them to get it and just a uh, quick what your initial thoughts are are on the unit when you get it because that's um did when you made your order did it did it tell you how long to expect to wait um you can write that back to us here right now if you do know but um yeah so there's definitely some cool stuff here and now, i want to say is, i think what you were talking oh, about yes sorry 
um, is you can actually pick from different color modes as well to emulate what it looked like back in the day. So these are simulating, these are like hard. So these are not in the, in the article they mentioned, these are not filters. These are actually like baked into the device. I think of how like these four modes are simulating the original. I think the top left one is their default is the default um, for analog pocket. But the one to the top right is like the original Game Boy screen. Looks mm -hmm. very fami familiar, right? Yeah. And the bottom left, I think, was for the Game Boy Light that had like an indigo kind of backlight. And the bottom yeah. right, I can't remember, but maybe it was the Game Boy, um, uh, the smaller one, I can't remember. But yeah. Now, I feel like I have that game somewhere. The That's the Super Mario Brothers Game Boy, or I can't remember. Yeah. Mario Land, I think, maybe. Yeah. Super Mario Land for Game Boy. Yeah. Now I want to start digging for that. That's kind of nostalgic. I one. think you should get an analog pocket. I think you should order one and uh, bring out some of the I'll, old games. And I'll, I'll think about that. I want to come over my then. stocking. Put it in my stocking. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a it's not a cheap stocking because it is two hundred nineteen dollars US. So true. We will get into that. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, before we before we move on about the screen, what's really cool mm -hmm. is you mentioned that it is a high resolution screen. 1600 yes. by 1440 is high. So what they've done is I really like the technique that they've done. This is what I, um, and I think Nintendo did this with their Wii U games and the Switch games. Mm -hmm. They they blow it up to a really high resolution. And then they, uh, I'm trying to, kind of similar to, um, yeah. So basically they're using the high, super high resolution to simulate really sharp pixels. So, okay. and then they're, then they can apply some, if, like it's just a really good technique. Um, using a high resolution screen to replicate mm -hmm. lower resolution. Um, you don't get a blurry mess and stuff if you if you do it right. If yeah. you handle it properly, you can get a really good effect. And they've um, done it. Like they even simulate um, uh, the original Game Boy's like grid cell based look. If you look closely at the image, you can the Game Boy can kind of see cell grid lines. And okay. they actually have that showing up in, in on this device as well. So it looks very, very close to the original hardware. Okay. It's cool. very impressive. So back to Ben here, our, our, our big fan today, Ben. Um, they said <laughs> within a few days, they're going to send an email on what group you get put into. So that's good information. Mm -hmm. um, and again, he's saying the first round of pre-orders today releases Q1 of 2022. 2022. So, so no stocking um, stuffer for this year. No stocking stuffer. So <laughs> unless you delay your Christmas. That's true. In which all your children if you have any will be crying sorry kids <laughs> we're doing christmas in on january 28th daddy's waiting for his analog pocket <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's awesome um so let's keep strolling here there's some more kind of images of what it looks like and then so you can get into um game boy color and game boy advance mm -hmm. i have a lot of favorites i love the game boy advance that was a fun yeah, me too. Fun little system. I had the Advance, but then I um, also had the SP, and I really enjoyed the... <laughs> okay, you're going to be like, well, why did you play that on a handheld? I really enjoy... I've always loved Super Mario 3, and they had okay. Super Mario 3 on the Game Boy Advance, which was a ton of fun. Yeah. So um, that, that's always... Especially, yeah, the SP was the clamshell one, right? It had the backlight. Yeah, it was, came in all different colors, blue, purple, pink, and you yeah. could open it and close it. Um, I think that's like the peak. And it had it. a rechargeable battery, not like I remember oh. you had the Game Boy Advance where you you the first one. AA batteries, yeah, yeah, or you could buy rechargeable like Duracells or whatever and put them in there. Yeah, no, that so. that clamshell one, uh, even um, it can still be pricey to get those today. Now I think they're not. Yeah, you won't find them for like ten, twenty bucks. They actually have a good value to them still. They're nice. I actually kind of want one again, but yeah, yeah. But now, but now the analog pocket might take that desire, might take over that uh, need for a Game Boy Advance. I mean, uh, the SP. Mm -hmm. So one thing I should mention is you can buy different ad adapters as well. So not only will it play Game Boy games, Game Boy Color games, Game Boy Advance games out of the box, but um, you can buy little adapters that allow it to play Game Gear games, Neo Geo Pocket Color games, and Atari Lynx games as well. And then it, I think right. it also says, and more. So I don't know if that's something that's out already or if that's going to be coming mm -hmm. um 
the, the design looks cool. It looks really sleek and modern looking. It does. Pop. They've got volume buttons on the side. So there's a, a look at the where the cartridge goes in on the back. Mm -hmm. And from what I can see, it looks like there's shoulder buttons there as well, which would mimic the ones that were on the Game Boy Advance, I believe. Yeah, Advance, right. Or the SP had them, I believe, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I think the Advance um, and SP. So Mario Tennis. <laughs> and then there's um, some ports on the bottom. Now, I believe there is a micro SD card slot, if I remember reading in here, but it's not for currently not for emulation, anything other than firmware, firmware cool. upgrades, yeah. but they said potentially um, for saving, um, saving games in the future. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so they, they've made a point of, they do not, um, they're not supporting emulation. This is not what this does. So like yeah. that SD card does not, you can't sideload it with ROMs and stuff. That's just not how it works. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't mean there won't be some way someone will find a way to do it, but um, that they're, they're designing this for original um, cartridges, original um, software. Mm -hmm. And uh and it's cool. It even supports like the link cable. So you can like link up between multiple pockets and have play multiplayer Game Boy games too. They they have that yeah. working. Um, I'm not sure. I feel like I was trying to read it. It sounds like it may support the original link cable or the okay. one that they sell you. Like it's kind of interesting. I was trying to, yeah. I'm not, so I'm not totally sure, but it might support the original Game Boy cables even up to a certain generation. Yeah. Um, it This just hits the right points. And yeah. It's so no, cool. it's, it's really cool, especially if you're into that retro gaming. I know. So where you live in the greater Vancouver area, yeah, one of our favorite video game stores is in that area. And when I drive the four hours down to your house, it's we always hit that store up and there's it's full of old. You could get Game Boy games, Game Boy Advance yeah. games, um, Game Boy Color games there. So you can still um, just to, to kind of describe this place, you can still rent DVDs there, too. It's the yeah. last video rental store in like yeah. this area. So shout out to Willow Video. Yeah. <laughs> yes, shout out to Willow Video. You if you're in the Vancouver <laughs> area, you go check them out. So um, so I want to pop this question up, Stephen, and, and then we'll um, keep going here. Yeah. It says, well, apparently there's going to be support for people making their own cores, which will be then will then be loaded off the SD card and apparently you can load ROMs from SD cards on other analog systems too. This pen Pansu has heard. Mm. Um, any thoughts on that? Yes. Yeah, so What's that? Um, there's a second message here and yes, you are supposed to be able to use the original link cables. So that's cool. Um, any thoughts on that there, Stephen? Yeah, no, I'm not surprised that the SD card could be used for emulation. It just sounds like, um, uh, the team making analog pocket just isn't officially supporting it like out of the box. It's not. So yeah, it seems to make sense that people can make use of it and do that. Um, yeah. You mentioned the um, people making their own cores. Yeah. So from my understanding, it has the analog pocket even has like two, um, what were they called? FPGA um, processors, FPGAs. And I don't they, recall. So we'll call them ABC one, two, three. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the FPGA. So, and these are, this is oh, kind of like, yeah. beyond, this, this is beyond my area of knowledge, but I find it fascinating, even just dipping into it being like, uh, FPGAs are cool. So apparently this has two FPGA cores and one of them, they're allowing third parties to like use the second core to do more stuff with it. Like you can kind of program these cores or something like, it's really interesting technology. Um, mm. And yeah. Panzu, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, this is great comments. Um, I'm excited to see what they do with this. Like, yeah, again, the FPGA stuff, I want to do more research on it and I kind of want to mm -hmm. look into it. It's kind of, but it's also when I was, yeah. Anyways, I could go further into that, but I'll stop. But because <laughs> that would get into just way too technical. But. Sure. Let's, let's dive over to their website here and have a quick look. So it does say pre order December 14th. 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is today, and that was two hours and 17 minutes ago. So you can pre-order them on there. Um, if you go into the pocket here, um, gives you a nice quick close-up of what it looks like. That is a sleek looking yeah. unit for sure. Yeah. Um, 
And if you click on pre-order, currently you can pre-order them. It is available to add to cart. They are, you have a black one and a white one. Now, originally, I think you'd mentioned this already before, they originally were, I believe, 199 US. Or 219. Or, or sorry, they were originally 199. Oh, they and, were. Oh. Um, they had to bump the price up to 219.99, I believe, because of all the costs of all the chip, Stuff going on chip shortages and everything going on like that. So, yeah. Um, just reading some of these comments here. Keep the game well. Yeah, so Panzu is mentioning about the four face buttons because like, the Game Boy doesn't need four face buttons. No. And so there's support for other things. And so Panzu is mentioning even there could be SNES support added added to it later even, and then it would be able to use the more buttons and the... So yeah. there's, it's just really cool. And I like how they didn't... Um, I like how they didn't mark the buttons. I like that they're just blank, personally. Yeah. Um, yeah. That might catch some people off guard, but it's just better to have that when you have multiple consoles being... Well, you could actually, if people don't know, you could have it come up on the screen as the console loads up or the game loads up what the buttons are. Yep. Like you could have a little pre thing that pops up yeah. showing what the buttons are. Or um, Yeah, so I think that's that would be cool if it did eventually have um, SNES support. Um, yeah, it would be. <laughs> which uh, Which is... No, go ahead. You'd have to have some kind of bigger console with a cable. I don't imagine there'd be an add-on that you just snap on the back that holds a SNES. <laughs> it would be more suited for, yeah, I know. I know. It would be more suited for like the dock mode or something though, which is, we haven't mentioned, there's also the dock that you can purchase, which I believe is $99, which is an add-on. Okay. Then you dock it into it. Again, just looks very, really sleek. Docks in and uh, gets exported to your TV nicely, and apparently even supports CRT televisions as well. You can do that. So is that this analog dock here? Screen, yes, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there are all, are all sorts of accessories here: pocket hard case, screen protectors, fast charging, and then here's the adapters we were talking about earlier. So Game Gear yeah. adapter, Neo Geo Pocket color adapter, Atari Lynx adapter, and the Turbo Turbo Graphic 16 adapter. Yeah. And then all sorts of cables as well. I do want to ask you, Ben G, you're asking what color did people get? What color did you get? Maybe drop that down there in the comments as well. I'd love to know if it was white or black. Yeah. Now, there is a frequently asked question area here that we also wanted to cover. So let's have a look at that. Um, so when will the analog pocket be released? So December 13th, 2021, which was yesterday, I believe that um is for people who had already pre-ordered them um they're already started shipping them from my understanding ben g went with black so that's awesome um, Sleek. it's always a hard decision hard decision i know i just bought the switch oled and i had to choose between the original colors and the white i have a hard time going for the colors. white i have a hard time hiding the dirt and the <laughs> <laughs> that's what i thought too <laughs> Yeah. So um, some of the interesting frequently asked questions, um, can Pocket play, can Pocket play copyright ROM files from the SD card slot? No, it is current. It, it is designed to play copyright ROM files from the, uh, okay, I just botched that. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pocket is not designed to play copyright ROM files from the SD card slot. Pocket is designed to play original legacy game cartridges yeah. From the yeah. cartridge slot so so again it doesn't mean that, that people i don't know that as as uh panzu mentioned it seems like people already have a way to do it but that's not what they've designed it for that's not at mm -hmm. least the intent of the company here yeah yeah so um the battery life six to ten hours of gameplay time a 4300 mm -hmm. milliamp hour battery um and a sleeping pocket does not use battery it says that's nice that's better than the old days of uh, driving in the car and batteries are dying and having on a vacation and having to get new <laughs> AA batteries and things, right? Yeah. <laughs> so much more convenient today. Especially uh, especially if you're doing Game Gear <laughs> compared to the original Game Gear. This is a true. much nicer experience. <laughs> <laughs> that thing, um, yeah. Is the pocket battery serviceable? Um, the, you have to get it serviced by them. Yeah. And it charges in about four to five hours with fast 
charge time. Um, Though they, they do sell the fast charging dock as well, which will do two hours. Two hours, yes. Yeah, yeah. With the, so, with the separate fast charging power supply. Yeah. And I'll skip through some of these. Um, yeah, so it supports the anything, multiplayer, as you mentioned. And I mean, I just yeah. want to say the FPGA development, that excites me. Um, the approach, what, yeah, so what I was meaning about hitting this all in the right points on a design form factor, beautiful, but also on the hardware level, beautiful. Mm -hmm. What they're doing with the FPGA uh, technology is just really cool. Getting it, getting it close to the original hardware using this technique and just having it like a real, a more much more authentic experience. Um, yeah. And there's plenty of other content, other people covering this hands on on YouTube here. And I did watch one. I think it was Vintage Modern Gamer, camera's name. Um, he was trying to find. I'll try to link. Maybe leave a link later to his video because I thought it was helpful. Um, he was trying to find a game that, uh, broke it. He was trying to find something that would, yeah. Thank you. Modern vintage gamer. Yeah. MVG. Um, yeah, he did review it and he was trying to break it. He was playing all kinds of games. And the only thing he could find, if I, if I recall, was, uh, the one game Ashante or something it's called. And okay. it was just, there was the one music track, the snare or something held a little bit longer than the original. Like there was just a little slight difference in this one song, but he knew the game well, so he could hear the difference. Okay. Other than that, he was having, he was hard pressed to find anything that was different. And even yeah. that, even that little change of the snare drum in that song for that game could be fixed with an update uh, later on with the software firmware update. So yeah. other than that, he was trying to break it. He was trying to find some kind of game. Um, Oh, he made he made the switch part of Sean. Okay, well that makes a lot of sense now. Thanks, Panzu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would you would want to be quite knowledgeable on it. See, I didn't know that. I've only come across his channel periodically and stuff, and haven't followed. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, so he yeah, so he did notice there was a slight difference, in just the snare of like the chip tune uh, song. That was it. Other than that, he couldn't really find it. He, he found it to be uh, even there was one game that had like a complex um, uh, drawing techniques that kind of more pushes the hardware of the Game Boy. It also ran. And yeah, um, yeah that's just really cool. So and it also also it supports Game Boy and the Game Boy Color modes. You can switch it to that and it supports those games. And uh, it's just cool. It's cool. Cool. Um, so. So why don't we get into our question of the day? And it's kind of a fun one for me anyway. Do you have any original Game Boy games kicking around? So you can leave a comment in the comment section if you do what you have. Do so you want to go first, Stephen? I, I, I will. And I, it may be a no, but I had um, I borrowed Pokemon Red from my friend <laughs> like 20 years ago. And you still and have it, it. It never made it back to him. <laughs> and now you can sell it for and probably buy this console. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I was like, sorry, Jordan, I took your game. No, he he lent it to me. And I, I think I had tried it years ago to see if it still works. And I think it was dead. I, It wasn't working. So I may have thrown it out. But that may have been, other than that, I may not have any more Game Boy games. But yeah. I know you do. I have a few other put away. I had to dig. I dug through one door, drawer and I'm like, hey, what's that? And it's probably the worst game ever. Football. <laughs> 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 it's play action football for the Game Boy. I do have that there. Um, I know I have probably a, a copy of Tetris or two. Um, there's probably a few more kicking around in a bin that you know haven't I been pulled out in a while. What I want to know about that game, though, does it have like the the, the terrible voices, like first down? And it has like the crackly. Honestly, it's been years since I played this. I just found it in my drawer right before we did this. So one of my favorite thing from the favorite things from NES kind of era of gaming and sports games is the crowd. How they simulate the crowd noises, the cheering. I don't. That's yeah. nostalgic for me. The <laughs> out of it. I don't know how to simulate it, but so <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, Panzu has a few Pokemon Red, Yellow, Pinball, Mystic Quest, and that's about it. Awesome. So. And Benji has Pokemon Yellow and Chris. You nerds, you Pokemon nerds, look at you guys. <laughs> <laughs> a few Zelda games and a bunch of Game Boy Advance games. Awesome. Yeah, it'll be uh, 
yeah again benji when you get yours leave us a comment of how you're enjoying it so yeah. um that's about it for our main show we'll stick around here and um chat with you guys for a little bit if you like if you haven't heard before when we hit a hundred subscribers we are going to be updating to 1080p streaming so make sure you like and subscribe and uh we'd love to have you continue to join us on a mostly weekly basis so yeah. thanks for watching <laughs> until next time take care bye bye